Uh, we ready to roll? This is Can Lions Essentials, where we'll be looking at some of the biggest topics emerging from our event, and then peeling back the curtain to understand the detail, the data, and the people at the core of the industry. Fernando Machado is the Global Chief Marketing Officer for Burger King, and he also happens to be one of the biggest campaigners for creativity in our industry. At the festival in 2019, he spoke openly about his recent run of success, which was only confirmed later in the week when he and his team picked up the Titanium Grand Prix and the very first Creative Brand of the Year award. When a brand like Burger King is doing so consistently well, you've got to ask yourself the question, what's the magic formula? What's the secret sauce? How do you go about creating a culture of creativity where winning lions becomes the inevitable byproduct? By exploring 65 years worth of our own data and drawing upon some of the most influential talks from the festival, as well as talking to experts from across our community, we're gonna dig into the detail to get to the bottom of the creativity conundrum. Looking back over a career's worth of creative output is like looking at a city from a distance. It's hard to picture every single brick that went into every single building to create the final result. But it is important to find out where the foundations began. For Fernando, his creative foundation grew from the work that already existed all around him. But more specifically, it began in a small room with a six pack of beer and award-winning work on the TV. If you really want to excel in creativity, if you really believe that creativity can be a source of competitive advantage, I think you need to be obsessed about it. I was always obsessed about advertising and design. We used to like hang around with beers uh, in one of, one of the apartments of the guys uh, and watch the reel from Cannes. Like back then when there was no internet, did we know how to do those campaigns? No fucking clue. But I, I, I always aspire to do great work. So how did Fernando go from watching ad reels with his friends to winning Brand of the Year for Burger King at Cannes? Well, there were a few steps in between. After several years working at Unilever, Burger King dialed his number in 2014 and asked him to join the team. Despite a slow run of success for the brand, it wasn't necessarily a case of out with the old and in with the new when he came aboard. I, I, at first, when I arrived at Burger King, I didn't bring anyone in, uh, to be honest, because I was already um, a, 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 a different body uh, coming to that entity. Uh, so I needed help from people who were there more than they needed my help, to be honest. So I basically like surrounded myself of people who I felt had potential. Uh, and like one, two years after, I started to bring some people on specific positions to help accelerate uh, 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 the change or accelerate the appreciation for, for creative and design. So it's all about building the very best team around you that's rich in knowledge and newfound expertise. But when you're a rookie and new to an organization, how do you go about quickly establishing trust to create impact? One of the best things that you can do is to engender trust within, within a group. I'm Charles Day, and I'm the founder of The Looking Glass, and I'm the host of the Fearless Creative Leadership Podcast. Trust is an easy thing to say and a very hard thing to achieve. Trust depends on a couple of things, in my experience. One is, you have to have a clear set of values. So as a leader, have you clearly articulated the values that are meaningful? And then do you hold people to account? Is there a consequence for behaving in ways that is counter to, to those sets of values? I think the very best leaders engender trust because they are clear about the values that matter. They do hold people to account to them, and that allows people to lean in. Fernando's approach of creativity and trust quickly began producing results. Data obtained through Love the Work shows just how quickly Burger King's awards haul increased over a few short years. Interestingly, it also shows an increase in creative success for the entire fast food industry. And we've seen some of the most talked about campaigns this year coming from both Popeyes and Wendy's. In fact, on Can Lion stage in 2018, Fernando explained just what it takes to become a true trendsetter. People sometimes they say like, you guys at Burger King, the work that you guys are doing, you guys are fearless, you're not afraid of anything. That's bullshit. We are afraid all the fucking time. Super you know? afraid. The only difference is that we do even when we are afraid. 
Fear and being afraid is part of the journey of doing something that's different. I actually think it's really hot because they created a, a trend. My name is Lauren Delisa Coleman. I am a digicultural trend analyst. I think this is what has always been the key to success no matter what industry you're looking at, right? Didn't Steve Jobs start with the iPhone and say, you know what, you have to give people what they want before they know that they want it. And I think if you're able to do that in a way that's very compelling, that's I think what's going to be the next trend is to create your own trend and to be able to stand out. And you know, some people ask me, ah, come on, you sold a Whopper for a penny. Obviously people would come. Guys, we had tried doing it for less. We had tried giving it away for free if people downloaded the app and nobody downloaded the app. And by the way, every fast food brand had tried to do that. It is not what brings people to the restaurant. It is not what leads people to engage with a brand. It's the fun of it. So do the accolades actually mean anything for business? Has it led to equal success when it comes to sales results? Burger King is a brand uh, that has always done great work historically, like a, a brand that won its first line in 1969. Between 2001, 2002 and 2004, uh, the brand didn't do much, honestly. In, in the space of four years, I think the brand won two bronze lions uh, in Cannes, and no wonder uh, the business results during that time uh, were not great. Then you pick like the past four or five years. I think that in the past five years we won, if I recall correctly, 134 lines. You look at our business results, we, we grew like double digit twice in an industry that's not growing double digit, like fast food, uh, and you were like very high single digit twice. I could go on and on talking about Mac Whopper, Google Home of the Whopper, like uh, every year uh, we, we, we've been like on a roll in terms of bringing creativity to campaigns, to activities that drive uh, business results. Burger King has seen a lot of success at Cannes Lions in recent years. And as we've just heard, that's reflected in the increase in revenue. But what's the blueprint for creative success? Money does play a key role, but not necessarily in the way that you'd think, especially when it comes to being creative on a budget. Creativity is what helps you uh, make the most out of your budget. You know, like uh, you always have a limitation, no matter how big you are, you always think that uh, you could have more budget uh, to spend. Uh, so budget will always be a constraint. You need to define and you need to be creative within the limitations that you have. Data from Love the Work actually shows us that from a pool of the top 25 spending brands, the amount of media spend has almost no bearing on the overall creative success. So if we can't measure success simply by looking at money out versus money in, how should we be measuring the success of the work? You first have to look and understand what is it that we're really measuring success based on. Sure, financial, financial reference points have to be part of the equation, but you have to look at a much broader set of propositions than that. So how do you judge success? How do you determine whether your business is successful? Is the first question that anybody should be asking when they're thinking about working for a company or working with a company. I, I hear a lot of discussion around how to measure creativity. Right, I mean, and I think that the real, uh, the discussion should start with like, what was the objective that you're trying to accomplish? Uh, there, will be, uh, there will be pieces of advertising, just as an, an example, that will be more focused on building the brand. There will be other campaigns that will be about driving short-term sales. But if you're able to establish a clear objective and, and define ways that you're going to measure against that objective, after you align with people on the objective, and you can measure, you'll be able to prove that creativity does pay off whatever uh, your objective may be. We know that having an obsession with creativity, a creative use of resources, and a clear measurement of success is key to producing creative work. But how do you convert an entire company into thinking more creatively? Well, the answer is influence. For a long time, I thought that, oh, if you develop the criteria, your criteria, and you know what's good and what's not so, what's not so good, uh, and if you're willing to work hard, you can make anything happen. But actually, uh, being able to influence the organization is as critical as anything else. I know lots of people who have criteria, who work really hard, who are obsessed, but they cannot make it happen. They are afraid to become not so popular, they are afraid of uh, pissing off people, they find comfortable in committee decision. So I really think that 
uh, being able to understand, have a read of the organization uh, and, and, and define what makes people tick. Uh, and also understand that uh, the best creative is probably not going to be done by committees, which means that uh, eventually uh, you need to pick up some fights to, to make stuff happen. Uh, so criteria and influencing uh, the organization to, uh, to make things happen, in my view, are really, uh, are really, really critical. Building a culture of creativity within your own team is a powerful foundation. However, you will inevitably need to partner with an agency or team in order to produce the work. For Burger King's Titanium Lions winning Whopper Detour, it was FCB New York, so we asked them what exactly goes into making a Lions winning partnership. My name is Gabriel Schmidt. I was the creative leader at Whopper Detour. Our agenda, in, in my point of view, can never be just doing something creative for the sake of it. We are here to solve business problems and we do that through, through creativity. Um, I think the Whopper is a, is, a, is an interesting example in, the, in that sense. So once you show them that you, know, you work on this together to truly solve something that you know, is important for their bottom line or for whatever business problem they have, the partnership just gets stronger and then, and then the longer it goes, the more creative it will be because the, 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 the trust between the parts is just, it just gets bigger and the bond gets stronger. And then, by the way, it gets way more fun too. Because when you go into the problems, you don't, go, you know, you don't, you don't get into the challenges fearing anything or fearing that relationship is not strong enough to, to you know, surpass whatever you, you, you have to. You just go and together you figure, you figure out uh, and, and then the results just get better, better and better. Having a great relationship with your creative partners is essential uh, in terms of doing great work. You know, like uh, many times, uh, the, the, your creative partner will be, should be like uh, your go-to team uh, to defend an idea when you need, you know. And it's true, our data shows us that brands and agencies that have worked together for 10 years or more are twice as likely to win a lion. This is a testament to the level of creativity that can be produced when there's a strong partnership and trust. So with everything that we've covered, there's just one question left. What do you do with all the lions you've won? I need to be honest with you. Um, I do have my first bronze lion. Uh, it has a very special place. There's a bronze lion from Vaseline with a campaign called uh, Skin is Amazing. Uh, it took me years to get a second lion. Uh, and then we had like this crazy year uh, in 2013, where if I recall correctly, we got 24 lions for Dove. I will get uh, a replica of the creative brand of the year uh, because, I, because I, I cherish the, those moments and I think it's a good reminder of like how happy we were as a team. We had like more than 20 people in Cannes uh, from the Burger King marketing team and we all came to stage uh, to pick up that award. Uh, and every time I, I see the award, I remember of the amazing time uh, we had uh, in uh, 2019, uh, where the brand was celebrated for, for the amazing work that get recognition and deliver results for us as a company and as a brand. So what have we learned? Well, Fernando's obsession with creativity has certainly driven him to the top of his game. However, you don't need to be surrounded by 100% creatives in order to build the foundation for a creative environment. We also learn that budgets have no influence on creative success. In fact, there are some brands with comparatively smaller budgets who are beating the more affluent competition. You must have influence in order to get buy-in from the top down and support a truly creative culture which can nurture the most successful work. And finally, long-term partnering and trust is what increases the chance of success. But let's leave the final word to Fernando. I think life is boring uh, without uh, creativity. I think that if we were all working uh, without any creativity or design, uh, most likely the, the brands that are already big would continue to be big. It would be impossible to shorten distances uh, because what I think creativity does is to bend reality uh, and, and change uh, dominance uh, because you, you don't have to only rely on budget and money uh, to, to create something that will be successful. Uh, that's where creativity can be a, 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 a shortcut. And without that, it would be a race where everyone is driving at the same speed.